Hello and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to do an interplanetary mission. And we are going to Duna today. Duna is the fourth planet in the Kerbal system. And it's the planet that is circling outside of Kerbin. So let's start the mission and I already sent a inter planetary probe into orbit around Kerbin. Uh, and I will talk a little bit more about this probe once we gotten it into orbit around the Sun. But first things first, there are two ways of getting yourself out of the out of Kerbal's influence. One is to use the moon to slingshot yourself out from Kerbin. And this will probably save you 75 to 100 meters per second. The other one is to burn, just burn in any place around Kerbin will slingshot you out into the solar system. I usually find that doing it on the dark side of Kerbin is the most efficient and gives the best result in the end when you're getting out in the system. It takes about 950 meters per second to get out of Kerbal's influence. You can do it, as I said, by slingshotting around the moon for less. But in this tutorial we have plenty of fuel and we have some thrust. I won't say plenty of thrust because we are using the nuclear engines, which are sort of weak, but they're fuel efficient. So finding the maneuver marker and locking on. And even though I'm using time acceleration, this probe is very slow. And you can see I overshot it and just bringing it slowly back down again. But when I'm doing the interplanetary missions, I usually find that using physics warp is a great help because without it, I would use a long time and this would this probe would be so slow that I wouldn't have patience for it. And to those of you who don't know how to use physics warp, that's pressing the ALT key and just the normal warp buttons. So let's warp till our burn point and we'll stop a couple of minutes before and start the burn. And you can see how slow this probe is moving without any physics warp at all and the burn would take about one and a half minutes so we'll speed that up to take one fourth of the time and I found out that doing course corrections with high physics warp on can be somewhat difficult it has a tendency to pull to one side or something not always right when using physics warp, but it helps by just slowing down to two. And we have escaped Kerbal. Now we our escape will be in two days and ten hours. So let's use that time to talk about our probe. As you can see the probe has three nuclear engines. Now the nuclear engines have only 60 kilonewtons of thrust but have a specific impulse of 800 and the specific impulse is how fuel efficient their engine is per kilonewton I guess and this rocket works with only one engine but it takes forever and the burn we just took one one and a half minute would take three times as long almost so I'm trading in the extra fuel it took to carry these two engines with me up to get some more thrust. Now the outside tanks are going to give fuel to the inner engines until they are out of fuel. And then we will decouple them and just fly on the main engine and have the main stage left. This will reduce weight and it will give us a fuel tank, full tank of fuel when we are approaching Duna, hopefully. 
So, still two days left. Let's take full time warp out until the solar system. So, we are now in orbit around the sun. And we want to go to Duna, so let's set that as a target. And there's a lot of calculations and different things you can find on the net to find your best burn point or closest encounter. But I usually find it easier just to go around and find it. But it looks like we're a little unlucky on where Duna is compared to when we left Kerbin. So we should do a burn pretty soon and I will do a... Uh, well we use some extra fuel to slingshot ourselves far out into the solar system and come back down. This will mean that when we are at our apwaps, Duna will come underneath and then we'll catch up to Duna. This is probably one of the longest burns. When I did a test of this, I got it uh, had about 60 days until the encounter and now it's about 190. So not so lucky today. But we shall prevail. Taking it the burn no a little closer just to see if we can save some fuel. Okay, so let's burn in six hours, and that will be a two and a half minute long burn. So we'll warp till the maneuver node, and when you're doing these great vast burns in in the solar system, you really don't have to be so precise as we are used to from Kerbal because the distances are so great and it takes as I said 190 days to get to our encounter so you have plenty of time to do maneuver changes and you have so much space to go on so if you overshoot it or something you just have to do a little course correction on the end or you can burn a little early as I did and you'll still just do some small course corrections. Now the final encounter burn will be very sensitive because we're going on this wide voyage going all the way out beyond Duna and then coming back down or back in actually we're getting. So I'm just trying to use this time physics to get my heading on to the maneuver node and you can see we have 80 meters per second left and this will change us over a million meters in our altitude from the sun it will raise the apwaps so much so at this point being very careful on your throttle will be a good thing but as I said earlier you have so much time to change and there's such a big distance between between um, the planets that there's no problem problem of doing course corrections later so we haven't approach Duna completely looks like we have to do a little retrograde burn that's one of the uh, annoying things with the maneuver nodes they can sometimes be in, in the way of seeing if you actually encountered or not but we will get our node over to a retrograde burn and just start burning slowly retrograde and chill our encounter perfect another thing to remember when using a probe is that it needs sunlight to have power or you can give it the um, reaction engines I guess the nuclear and uh, nuclear reaction power supplies I don't remember what they're called but if you use solar panels they have to face the sun all 
the whole time or you will find yourself drifting through outer space without any power and you'll be lost so we just got a perfect demonstration of physics warp that it can break break your spaceship so this usually decouples in one piece but because I had physics warp on full it went into a thousand pieces or four pieces now let's do full time warp and this will take some time so I will play you guys some music until we reach Duna So we are approaching Duna and we don't want to overshoot this because this is a one attempt approach I guess I could call it. You could do some course corrections but you probably waste so much fuel and time that it would be better to do the whole thing over again. Now the last time I tried this and I sent the other probe to do now I actually had so much fuel in the outside tanks that I didn't decouple them until I was in orbit around Duna so this shows how much extra fuel you'll have to burn to do this maneuver I just did but the probe has plenty of fuel so it's not a problem but just so you know this uses a lot more fuel but we are now getting our periaps above Duna it looks like we're going to be at about a 45 degree inclination I guess but we want to warp closer to the periaps we want to do as much of our burns at periaps and apoaps to save the remaining fuel we have and just taking it about 8 minutes I guess that will give us time to do our maneuvers and get into position and I will guess we'll just start a little bit early just to be on the safe side and we are going to use full physics warp to get this this velocity all the way down and we get our app apps and actually if you watch the um, orbit in your solar system you will see your her whole app apps and peri apps getting closer to dunas so that's one way of seeing how much time it's left until you get a orbit you could do the maneuver nodes but I really don't see the point of wasting time putting them up because I know I'm going to do a retrograde burn anyhow so we should probably soon see that um, orbit is starting to take shape <clears throat> and we have used about well soon half our tank of fuel so we have a lot of fuel for doing our planetary burns or inclination changes and orbit changes if we want to do that and I'll bring the periaps all the way down to uh, let's see what is a good number we'll probably take it down to 300 I guess but first I'll have to do some course changes because now our um, retrograde marker has moved 
and the ship is behaving a little oddly I don't know why I've tested this ship two times now and it worked perfectly but of course something always have to happen when you are going to record it so 238 meters above or 1000 meters above Duna will be fine going over to time warp again and taking it down to the periaps and you can see we could have slingshot ourselves right out again thanks to Ike the moon orbiting Duna but we are going to burn at the periaps anyhow so it will not be a problem finding the retrograde marker again and doing our retrograde burn and I think something has happened with my spacecraft that makes it want to go in one it keeps turning to the right all the time for some reason so I guess there's a bug in the game that tells it the right is always on uh, it doesn't look oh there is some I've been pressing the Alt and D key that changes your um, it trims your planes or your spacecraft to lean in a different direction so actually it wasn't a bug of the game it's just my stupidity but anyhow now you learn that how to trim your spacecraft you use Alt and D S A or W keys and we're bringing this all the way down and I want to try to circularize around 200 and probably 40 or something let's see periaps apps and we're going in what direction we are traveling towards apps so that wants that makes it or makes my next maneuver burning downwards that will push my apps down and my periaps up so I don't need to waste so much fuel going back and forth back and forth I can just do a burn here in the middle pushing my apps and periapses around and there we go we are in orbit around Duna and for some reason I have gotten terrible lag today when screen recording the game works perfectly without the screen recorder so I guess it I need to find some different way of recording but for now this will have to do and we are at Duna and it's time to start exploring space see you later guys this is Wearing Storm signing off